everybody. This is Menopause Taylor bringing you the state of menopause in the world today. And I am here again to teach you all the facts about menopause. And sometimes learning the facts requires that you also learn about the misconceptions. And today I am going to discuss one of the biggest misconceptions in the world of menopause. Hey, I think it's one of the biggest misconceptions in the world of women. Can you guess what it is? It's the word hysterectomy and all that it implies and in the realm of misconceptions, all that it does not imply. So this broadcast is entitled Total Hysterectomy is a Total Misconception. Now, this is the beginning of a series of broadcasts that I'll be giving you on some critical aspects of menopause. In the broadcast after this one, I'm going to discuss sudden menopause. The one after that, I'll discuss premature menopause. Then I'll discuss fibroids. And after that, I'll teach you about endometriosis. All of these things can have a profound effect on your menopause and its management. So, by the time you listen to all of these, you're going to know a whole lot. But let's loop back as to why you should listen to this particular podcast on hysterectomy. And the reason that you should listen to this is because most people have the word hysterectomy all wrong. In fact, so many people have it wrong that if you have it right, they think you're wrong. Yep, that's right. <laughs> the topic of hysterectomy is so misconceived that nearly everyone has the same misconceptions. So, you know, I like to give you little test questions every now and then. Um, I do this a lot on my YouTube videos. So I'm going to give you a test question and I want to see if you can answer it. Here it is. What does total hysterectomy mean? A. Removal of your uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. B, removal of your uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. C, removal of your uterus and cervix. D, removal of your uterus. E, the onset of menopause. F is a combination of removal of your uterus, fallopian tubes, and ovaries, plus the onset of menopause. And G is removal of your uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes, and ovaries with the onset of menopause. Do you know the answer? Now, if you're like the majority of women, you picked removal of uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes, and ovaries. If you're like the minority of women, you pick the removal of the uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes, and ovaries, and the onset of menopause. But if you're a student of menopause, Taylor's Menopause University, in other words, my education, your answer was removal of the uterus and cervix. Just the uterus and cervix. So do you think that was easy or are you shocked? Okay, well, now here's another quiz question. How about this one? What does partial hysterectomy mean? A, removal of your cervix, but not your uterus. B, removal of your uterus and cervix, but not your fallopian tubes and ovaries. C, Removal of your uterus, cervix, and fallopian tubes, but not your ovaries. D, removal of your uterus and fallopian tubes, but not your cervix and ovaries. E, removal of your uterus, but not your cervix. And F, removal of your fallopian tubes and ovaries, but not your uterus and cervix. Was that easier? I mean, did it clarify the first one or did it just totally confuse you even further? Do you see why this is a big misconception for most women? So the answer to that one is partial hysterectomy means 
removal of your uterus, but not your cervix. Now, don't fret, because after listening to this broadcast, you'll never get this wrong again. I'm not going to be giving you a complete anatomy lesson, but what I'm going to do is make sure you never, ever get the meaning of total hysterectomy wrong again. This is such a problematic topic, and because many women don't learn enough about it, I think it's super important to address it. Now, when I present a video, I use a lot of visual props, most of which I make. <laughs> and when I do this video on the hysterectomy, what I use is food to demonstrate your body parts. And I put the food on a chopping board and the food represents your reproductive organs. So picture in your mind, please, just try to picture this. On a chopping board, I would have a pear and I'd place it upside down so that the big wide part is on top and the stem is on the bottom. And then emanating from the upper part of the wide portion of the pear, I would have two string beans, one on either side, and those would represent your fallopian tubes. And dangling under the outer edge of each string bean would be a walnut, and those would represent your ovaries. And believe it or not, that would be very representative of your reproductive organs. And in order to address this topic of total hysterectomy, I would want you to focus on the pear. Um, a pear. If I hold a pear in my hand, stem down, that's what I want you to think about. So the pear represents two of the four parts of your reproductive tract, just the pear alone. It represents both your uterus and your cervix. But you know how when you look at a pear, you can't see two parts to it. It's just one big thing, right? You see a whole pear. You don't see two things. So I would use a whole pear to represent two things, your uterus and your cervix. How can just one whole pear represent two things? Well, this is possible because your cervix and your uterus are connected. They're both part of one structure. And the way it looks on your body is your uterus is up in your abdomen, but your cervix dips down into your vagina. In my videos, what I do is I take a toilet paper roll and I stick the stem end of the pear into the toilet paper roll <laughs> so that you can't see the bottom of the pear. And I explain that everything above the toilet paper roll is your uterus and everything hidden by the toilet paper roll is your cervix. So when you've got the, to the pear stuck in the toilet paper roll, all you can see is the wide part of the pear. That's the part that's above your vagina. And that is the part that is called your uterus. So you really have two structures that comprise the whole pair. When your doctor looks into your vagina to do a pap smear, he can see your cervix. Because he's looking into your vagina and that cervix dips down into your vagina. But he can't see your uterus. And that's because your uterus is up inside your pelvis. It's attached to your cervix, but it's hidden from you. So with that visual in mind, I'm going to change some of these words a bit. And this is where you're going to have that aha moment. Think of the total pair. But instead of total pair, let's say total uterus. So the whole pair is the total uterus. Now, the medical word for removal of your uterus is hysterectomy. So now what does total hysterectomy mean? 
It means removal of the total uterus. But I just told you that the whole pair is the total uterus, right? So total hysterectomy means removal of the whole pair, which encompasses both your uterus and your cervix. So if you have a total hysterectomy, your doctor will not see your cervix when he looks into your vagina because it will be gone. It's removed with the rest of the pair. The cervix is removed with a total hysterectomy. So that brings us to that second quiz question I gave you that was what is a partial hysterectomy? And a partial hysterectomy removes only part of the pair. You know, in my YouTube videos, I'm always doing these really goofy things that make people just never forget the moment. And when I demonstrate this in a YouTube video, <laughs> I say, here, I'm going to show you what a partial hysterectomy is. And I take the pair and I set it down on the chopping board and I take a great big cleaver and I go whack and I whack off the end of the pair. Because that end of the pair, the stem end, is the cervix. So a partial hysterectomy removes the part of the pair that is the wide, big part that is above your vagina and in your abdomen, but it leaves your cervix in place. And when you have a partial hysterectomy, when your doctor looks into your vagina, he still sees your cervix because it's still there. So... A total hysterectomy removes the whole pair, and a partial hysterectomy only removes the big, fat part of the pair. Now, I want you to think back on my imagined model of your reproductive tract. I said you have the pair, which we have already addressed, but you also have those string beans on either side and the walnuts hanging down at the sides. If you look at that whole model, after either type of hysterectomy, you have to decide, does either type of hysterectomy cause menopause? If you have a partial hysterectomy, you remove only the upper part of the pair, the big part of the pair. So what you see is, you see the cervix, you see the fallopian tubes, and you see the ovaries. They're still there. So does a partial hysterectomy cause menopause? Which structures are responsible for menopause? It's your ovaries, which would be the walnuts. They're still there. So partial hysterectomy does not cause menopause. What about total hysterectomy? If you have all those structures, the string beans, the walnuts, and the pear, and you remove the pear, what do you have? You end up with just the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. So does a total hysterectomy cause menopause? No, the ovaries are still there. The ovaries are responsible for menopause, not your uterus or your cervix. The problem is that most people have the misconception that a total hysterectomy causes menopause and that a partial hysterectomy does not. Do you see how many layers of misconception are involved with that assumption? Nothing about a hysterectomy causes menopause. Hysterectomy is only about your uterus and all about your uterus. Menopause is all about your ovaries and only about your ovaries. The reason women think a hysterectomy causes menopause is because they don't know the difference between the two types of hysterectomy.